So when I moved my last frame over, I noticed that I had changed everything except for the clouds. So that's why it's always good to check. So I'm going to keep everything the same, but I need to move and adjust my clouds again. I want to see if I change the eyebrows. I didn't change the eyebrows either, so I need to do that. So many things to keep in mind. I'm going to go back to the second position of eyebrow. Or no, maybe to the first position of eyebrow. Let's play with the settings on the explosion stem here. So like the nose, they just kind of change a little bit. All right, now that's looking better. Except that I think I can make the icicles more opaque than even 60% now that they're not on pin light anymore. Let's try, let's try 80. All right, and we are really close to our final frame. I think I can do the final frame next. And the final frame is already built. All right, so let's put this together. Hold down Option, Layer, Merge Visible. Select it all. Copy it all, paste it all into your stage. And now the final frame, which I already have. I just move it to the top. From this to this. And now let's see, I'll save the work, save my assets, but I should deselect and delete that final merged one. Okay, now I can run an animation test. This is what I started the day with, just the, the animation test of the first row. With that practice, I was able to build a lot more frames. So let's do it. We go to timeline, window timeline. Go to the options and we say make frames from layers. I just get rid of the, the blank white background. Fit it on the screen, set the timing, holding down shift for all, and put other, and then 0.3 seconds, then plus play. And then except for the abrupt change from the end to the beginning, it transitions pretty well. And I like how the clouds get to move. And so I'm in good shape for next class. So in next class, we're gonna figure out how to get it to not just end in the animation to something abruptly different from the beginning, though our storyboard is gonna have that, right? So this goes from beginning, middle, to end, like all these different phases. So how can I get it to set, to reset, to go from this to this? Well, one really simple way is to do what's called a crossfade. And I can do this all by animating in the timeline. So a crossfade is you would take two frames and select them both. So instead of holding down shift, this time I'm gonna click on my last frame, and then I'm gonna hold command and click on my first frame. So I wanna transition between these two frames. And then I click on this option here, and I'll go over this beginning of next class. 
which is called the tween tool. And I'm going to put five frames between these two. And then they're going to crossfade them together like so. The problem with the crossfade in, in Photoshop is that it will take both of their opacities down equally. So on each of these, I then have to program the opacities on the eyeball for the bottom frame to be at 100%. So this is kind of a a simple way to set to reset, not always the best way, but something interesting to show you that I probably won't keep, just so you can have a, a smoother end to your animation. Okay, so now I've set the bottom frame of each of those to be 100%, and then this is the transition you get. Slowly it fades in, right? So that's called animating within the timeline. Another thing we could do is we could take, I'll delete those, those cross-fading ones. What I can do is I can just run the whole thing backwards, and then I'll stop this video because we're at 1210. So I can take, select all the frames, and then I can say, copy the frames. And then I can say, paste the frames after the selection. And then I can, because now these are selected. And then I can say, reverse the frames. So they're in reverse order. And so now when we play it from the beginning, it will play first forwards. And then it will hover on the last frame. And then it will reverse. So sometimes that makes sense. Doesn't quite make sense for a cat's head exploding, but these are different ways we can set the animation to reset. And then otherwise I can just customize some frames to help that process. So I'm going to actually just save this as a GIF and post it as my process so far. So to do that, I say export, save for web legacy, use the settings as they are, because I know they worked last time, and then I'll put that GIF into Canvas. And then next class, I'll try to have a more satisfying way to set to reset, output my final animation, and then make a refined storyboard. So we have both a print portfolio and a motion portfolio for this project. And that's what we'll be doing on Wednesday. Okay, you too. You too. Take care.